Hi folks, welcome back to the Model 3 Man channel. Today's topic, the all-weather official Tesla Model 3 floor mats. Actually, they're not made by Tesla, they're made by WeatherTech. But I will be looking at the pros and cons of Tesla's uh, official offerings. What are the strengths, what are the weaknesses of these particular floor mats? And based on that, will you want the Tesla floor mats? Obviously, if you're following any of the Model 3 Facebook groups, you will have noticed that there's a lot of discussion on all-weather mats. The reason is obvious. Here in North America, we're well into the winter season. And for those who live in areas that are hit by a lot of snow, a lot of rain, uh, you're dragging all of that into your car. How do they stack up against many of the other offerings? After all, Tesla was pretty late coming out of the gate. The vacuum and the void was filled by many other third-party manufacturers. So when Tesla finally got theirs manufactured, I ordered the all-weather floor mats for the Model 3. They didn't come, they didn't come, and then they still didn't come, and then I complained. And then suddenly they came within two days. Moral, complain if you have to. So, looks like they're made by WeatherTech. Following I Justine's advice, take dirty great knife and unbox. Here we go, and uh, all seem to be bundled together. Instructions for floor mats? Really? Ah, 15 million languages, that's why. So, obviously, we're going to choose English, and they've conveniently put it first. Lots of warnings. Don't try and eat them. Don't feed them to small children. Don't wear them. Good. Um, but then you turn over the page, and a few things struck me. So there's a yet another language, but the same pictures. And the whole book, which is pretty thick, is just the same picture printed over and over. And you think of all the poor dead trees, how many trees they killed. Look at that. We could go on. And I've just skipped over three pages here. There's more. There are many more. <laughs> Why not put these on the front inside cover with numbers against them and then just one or two pages of instructions? In any case, the other thing I discovered was everything has to be given fancy names. Let's look at step number three. Press firmly on the floor mat to secure hook retention discs. What are those? Well, it turns out that is the hook retention disc. In my day, we just called that a Velcro patch. Press down so that the Velcro patch will adhere to the carpet. No, it's a hook retention disc system. Wonderful. All right, let's just open it up and we'll have a look at the individual mat. So we have the, the two rear mats, one on the left and the one on the right. And you can see the interlocking mechanism. You've got four little rubber tabs here. And on the reverse side, you've got the recesses for each of those to fit into. That will fit over there, and uh, that links them together. It stops them from sliding once they're in the car. So we'll disconnect that. And then you've got the front ones, and I think it pretty much goes without saying that you're going to have one for the right side and one for the left. They are not exchangeable. So there is the left, and the footrest, the dead pedal goes there. It doesn't have a cover for the dead pedal, so there's kind of a gap over here. That will fit neatly under the accelerator and the brake pedals, and this will tuck up against where your seat is. And this one here is the front passenger side. You will notice that to help anchor them, on the rear side you've got these kind of Velcro tabs that will engage with the original carpet. Driver side, passenger side, let's get them downstairs, get them into the car. It always amuses me when I go onto YouTube and uh, take a look at uh, some of the videos. For example, uh, Tesla floor mats, Tesla all-weather floor mats. And you have guys coming and say, oh, car's a little bit of a mess here. Well, let's just take this out. Uh, we'll take this one out. Yeah, I should clean this out, but you know what? Let's just put the mats in and show you how it goes. That's not the way I do it. I'm going to get the vacuum out. I'm going to make sure that there's no dirt. Anyway, look at the leaves. Look at the gravel. Why would you want to put an all-weather mat on top of existing debris and leaves and gravel and stones? Clean the carpets. Make sure they're dry. Make sure they're clean. Let's get on to that.
So now that we've properly cleaned the car, the lower mats, we took out the surface mats that came with the car. We work on the base mat, the installed mat. So this is the front driver's side mat. Uh, you'll notice right away it's got an official Tesla logo right there. The, the mat has a pretty low lip or ridge around the edge. I am a little concerned that it won't hold much water. I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, ultimately it could leak over there. But then again, these look very good. Um, I think they're made by Weatherproof uh, on behalf of Tesla. And here are the little disc retention disc retention hooks yeah hook retention discs something like that and each of these uh, six little discs will help to anchor it to the carpet so that goes down this is where the dead pedal the footrest is going to come out so unlike some of them it does not cover the dead pedal uh, it is simply going to go around it and yes it's possible for things to go down here but the one advantage of the Tesla all-weather mats is that they really do look good. They look like they were made for the car. So the grooves and the little recesses will capture quite a bit of the water. The lip should hold it to a large degree. Let's go put it inside. So what I'm gonna do now is just position it first because I'm guessing that these hooks will pretty much lock it into place. So we want to get this to be exactly aligned. Yeah, I can feel them, I can feel them hooking in. So let's just align the back part first like that oh that fits very nicely that's pretty good let's just bring that in a little and now we can push this underneath the pedals and just anchor it all over that fits very well these are beautifully made passenger seat coming up next just make sure that all of the hook retention discs are doing their job so the passenger mat is pretty much the same as that, excepting there's no dead pedal cutout. It also has the uh, retention disc, the little hook disc over there. It has, um, it has three of them in total. So one, two, three. I'm guessing that's enough. Uh, you know, a dragon lady sits here most of the time. Her feet hardly even reach the floor. Not going to be a problem. Don't chill, dragon lady. So let's put this in here. So what we're going to do is just move it until... It seats itself, and, and I am again impressed by how beautifully well they're made. They're coming right up to the carpet here. They're exactly touching the edge. They come right up against the mound on which the seat is installed. Push that back a little. They go right up to the edge. And then all we do is just push it here and make sure that it's seated. Basically, that's it. It looks like it would probably hold quite a bit of water. If I look at the lip over here, you can see that the water if it runs back. It's going to come up against at least a one centimeter high uh, outer ridge. That's pretty good. Once again, Tesla logo over here kind of integrates. Over here, you've got the Model 3 logo. There you've got Tesla. Let's get to the back ones. So, uh, back mats. They're also a specific right and a left. Uh, I want to draw your attention here. This is a little flap that interlocks with the left-hand rear mat. The rest of the mat is just like the front, uh, also with the Tesla logo right there. And this is definitely the right-hand side. Any retention discs? No! So how the back one works is that because the two are locked together, there's very little movement, very little slide that will happen. So let's take this like this, and uh, we're just going to fit it firmly against the left hand side just like that firmly against the back once again it fits really well just on the inside of the left hand seat runner um, I'm pulling it as much as I can against the outer carpeted wall because what I want is for there to be enough room on the left and if this goes up against the side that's what it was meant to do that will keep it up so rear seats and this is the left hand side you'll notice here that there are four distinct recesses which exactly match the male on the other side of the right mat so if we put this in here once again we just have to make sure we correctly align the join so i'm going to push it right up against it we're going to make sure that it locks into place 
Okay, that's it. And now the rest of it will simply fit. Oh, it comes right up to the side wall. That's beautiful. That's well made. Let's just check here again. There we are. They're locked together. That's it. Rear right, rear left, joined together as one. By the way, this makes it a lot easier to clean because if I want to take the mats out, all I have to do is pull this up, take it out that side. If you've got one long strip like this, it makes it a lot more difficult to get out and to reposition. So set that one first, the right side, set the left side next, lock it into place, and you're done. That's the job. So now that we've got them installed, let's take a look at the pros and the cons. And honestly, this is pretty subjective. They look good. The official Tesla floor mats look better than any of the others. Um, many of the others have weird, very large logos to emblazon the mat. Tesla's logo, a very discreet logo down the outer edge of the mats. You can see it's there, but it is pretty well hidden. What else? Well they look as though they were part of the original car design. These were made for the Model 3 by the people that made the Model 3. At least they obviously advised WeatherTech and they gave them their specifications, but they look like they're part of the decor. They fit beautifully up to the edges of the carpet where the carpet rises. They fit right up against that. The thin lines that then widen into slightly broader channels, they look streamlined, they look discreet, they look tasteful, they really do look good. So I give Tesla 10 out of 10 on the appearance of the mats. And that's the driver, passenger, and the rear floor mats, the two that interlock. Second uh, positive. I do like the way that the rear mats interlock one locking into the other. It's far easier to take out a single mat and clean it and put it back than it is to take a very wide strip like the original ones that came with the car uh, than to pull that out of the car. Far easier to dislodge the dirt, harder to get it out. So if the two mats at the back clip into place, which they do, you can just unclip, take out a single piece, clean it, wash it, bring it back in and join them together again. Number three, the floor mat should be minimal. Minimal in appearance, minimal in the sense that it does not look like it's taking up an inordinate amount of space. So the minimalism of Tesla's floor mats is actually to be praised. They have a lip at the edge on all sides. It's not very large. It's about a centimeter, but it abuts against where the carpet rises. So it actually does fit completely across the breadth of the carpet and the depth of the carpet, but they're minimal. They don't look like they're big and clunky and heavy. What else? Color? Well, the color fits in perfectly. They look very, very good. They're neither too black and too dark, nor too light. They just look right. So what about the, the negatives? What about the cons? If you live in a geographic region where snow is heavy, where every day you're trudging through snow and bringing it into the car, I can foresee that enough water might melt off your boots or your shoes so that it runs down and pools in an area and it's possible that it goes over the lip. I think the lip is close to a centimeter in height. It's about that high. So will that be enough to retain the water? Perhaps not if there's a lot. I'm willing to grant that. Here in Vancouver, we don't actually have that much snow during the winter, sometimes two or three falls for the entire season. We have a lot of rain, but then again, you shake your feet before you put them in the car and there, you will never get that much rain that it's going to leak over the retaining lip there. So it is a con, but it's only a con if you live in a place that you're going to be putting a lot of snow or water onto those mats. Uh, the other one, well, for the driver, the left hand side, you've got that dead pedal or the footrest and there's nothing that covers it. Now, the footrest is already covered in a rubber strip, but where the Tesla floor mat meets that dead pedal, uh, you actually have a little gap. And in that gap, you can actually get water or gravel or grit falling down. I think that is probably the weakest area, 
I think that it's only obviously it only affects the driver but then again the car is occupied by a driver probably 90% of the time so personally I, I would have enjoyed seeing that it extended up over the footrest the dead pedal and uh, that is perhaps its only weakness on the other hand it might have made the design look a whole lot less elegant so in life equipment is always a trade-off accessories are a trade-off so in my book for where I live and the way that I like to see my floor mats these are an absolute winner you may not agree with it in that case there are plenty of other mats and you can look at some of the links I've put down below uh, take a look at those and see if you can find ones that are perhaps more to your liking so that's it for today now tomorrow I'll be uploading another video and it's going to be first reactions of my family members and my reactions to using enhanced autopilot on the road I can tell you you don't want to miss that so why don't you hit the subscribe button down below or as uh, Casey and Candace's daughter says hit the ascribe button smash the ascribe button hit the notification bell and you won't miss the next episode and any of the other upcoming episodes thanks again for supporting the channel thanks to those who subscribed I hope you enjoyed this episode see you again